Welcome to Bible Insights with Wayne Conrad. God's Word is a lamp to our feet and a light to our path. Today's topic, Jesus' provocative action and question. After Jesus' triumphal entry into Jerusalem on the day that we call Sunday, that is the first day of the week, he went directly to the temple. And Mark 11:11 11, 11 summarizes for us what happened. He went into Jerusalem and into the temple. After looking around at everything, since it was already late, he went out to Bethany with the twelve. So on that day, he enters in Jerusalem in great, with great crowds thronging him, proclaiming him to be the son of David, the king of Israel etc. He goes into the temple. He looks at everything. He looks at, observes basically what's going on in the temple, but he doesn't do anything. He doesn't teach. He doesn't do any actions. He observes. He turns around, walks out, and he and the 12 go back to Bethany to spend the night. On the second day of the week, what we call Monday, he goes back to Jerusalem. And we pick up the narrative. I'm going to be reading from Mark chapter 11, and I'm going to be using the Christian standard version. The next day, when they went out from Bethany, that's in the morning time, he was hungry. And seeing at the distance a fig tree with leaves, he went to find out if there was anything on it. And when he came to it, he found nothing but leaves, for it was not the season for figs. He said to it, May no one ever eat fruit from you again. And his disciples heard it. Now this is a prophetic action and a provocative prophetic action. And it's meant for his disciples. For them to observe him, what he did, and what he said. He will explain more later. So then they proceed on in to Jerusalem, and we pick up the narrative. Mark eleven fifteen. They came to Jerusalem, and he went into the temple, and he began to throw out those buying and selling. He overturned the tables of the money chambers and the chairs of those selling doves and would not permit anyone to carry goods through the temple. In other words, he stopped the commerce. He stopped the tax collecting. He stopped the commerce. He let loose the animals. It was chaos. And then he, he began teaching the people. He was teaching them, saying, Is it not written, My house will be called a house of prayer for all nations, but you have made it a den of thieves. The chief priest and the scribes heard it and started looking for a way to kill him, for they were afraid of him because the whole crowd was astonished by his teaching. Whenever evening came, it's a long day, they would go out of the city back to Bethany to spend the night. This is Jesus' Monday. So he does two provocative, prophetic actions on this day. The first, a rather silent one, but his disciples observe it and they hear what he says. He curses the fig tree and he's acting as a prophet and he will explain more of this in the day that follows and in the weeks that follow. But the second action is he goes into the temple courts and he has observed what was taking place the previous day. Now, Matthew gives us more detail, and so I want to read from the account of Matthew. Now, remember that the crowds proclaim him, saying, this is the prophet Jesus from Nazareth of Galilee. And they had shouted to him as he went in, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. 
Now, there are two theological themes that Jesus is picking up on, and he is going to proclaim that he is the fulfillment of these two great truths. They are realities. One of them is the reality of the temple. You see, those who were really up to date on this Jesus of Nazareth guy would recall that this action of him cleansing the temple had previously occurred some three or four years earlier when he first began his ministry. We read about that in the second chapter of John where it says that Jesus went to Jerusalem and there he overturned the tables. Listen again, I'm going to read the text from the Christian Standard Bible. This is what it says. The Jewish Passover was near, and so Jesus went up to Jerusalem. In the temple, he found people selling oxen, sheep, and doves, and he also found the money changers sitting there. After making a whip out of the courts, he drove everyone out of the temple with their sheep and oxen. He also poured out the money changers' coins and overturned the tables. He told those who were selling doves, get these things out of here. Stop turning my father's house into a marketplace. And his disciples remembered that it is written, zeal for your house will consume me. So the Jews replied to him, what sign will you show us for doing these things? And Jesus answered, destroy this temple and I will raise it up in three days. Therefore, the Jews said, this temple took 46 years to build and will you raise it up in three days? But he was speaking about the temple of his body. So when he was raised from the dead, his disciples remembered that he had said this, and they believed the scriptures and the statement that Jesus had made. Now, Jesus had begun his ministry in Jerusalem with this provocative action, and now he is coming to end his ministry with the same provocative action. We know there are different accounts because of the way it is described and because of the conversation that follows. First, the first time, some three or four years earlier, and now this time, at the beginning of the week that will culminate in Jesus' death on the cross. Now, Jesus' provocative action in the temple is meant to basically reveal the unstated to the people's intention of the Jewish leaders to have Jesus put to death. He is basically tearing off their mask by this provocative action. There's an expression that we sometimes use. He was throwing down the gauntlet. It's like a very direct challenge and a bold challenge to reveal yourself. And this is what's going to take place, not only on this day, but on the next day when he's going to return to the temple. But let's stick with this one for right now. This is Monday. He's come into the temple, and he, having observed that the court, the outer court, the court of the Gentiles, is full of merchandise. The temple authorities have set up in this courtyard, the area where the Gentiles, the God-fearers, come could come to seek the God of Israel. They set up their money changers tables. This was the collection of the temple tax and payment on offerings, etc. So this was the business enterprise of the temple. And there was all the livestock. You came to Jerusalem. You didn't have the livestock. You didn't bring it with you. So you could purchase it from the temple. And so that's what it was for. It served a legitimate business purpose, but it was set up in the wrong place and he was being handled by sinful people who had unholy motives. At any rate, it stirs up the anger of the Lord Jesus Christ, a righteous anger, because they have turned the temple courtyard meant for all nations into a place of merchandise, not a place of prayer or worship of God. And so we read in the Matthew 21 account, Jesus entered the temple 
drove out all who bought and sold in the temple. He overturned the tables of the money chambers and the seats of those who sold pigeons. And he said to them, it is written, my house shall be called a house of prayer, but you have made it a den of robbers. Now think back about the temple cleansing at the beginning of his ministry, where he said, destroy this temple, and in three days, I'll raise it up again. Jesus is preparing and is, in a sort of a veiled way, proclaiming that he himself is the fulfillment of the temple. God is building a new temple. It's not a temple made of bricks and stones and jewels. It is a temple associated with his own body that will be offered up as a Passover sacrifice, will be raised incorruptible, and those who are associated with him, joined to him by faith, will constitute the new temple of God. This is his challenge in this action. Now, what happens? He does this, The Jewish leaders are aghast, but they stand aside because the crowds are all around Jesus. He didn't go into the temple by himself or even with the 12. He went in with the crowds that were following him. They were clamoring to hear him and to see what he would do next. And now he comes into the temple and the blind and the lame came to him in the temple and he healed them. But when the chief priest And the scribes saw the wonderful things that he did. And the children crying out in the temple. This is Monday. They continue the cry from the previous day. Hosanna to the son of David. They were indignant. And they said to him, do you hear what these are saying? And Jesus said to them, yes. Have you never read out of the mouths of infants and nursing babies? You have prepared praise. And leaving them. He went out of the city to Bethany, and he lodged there. Now, you notice the second theological thing. The first was the temple, and the second is the identity of the Messiah. For Jesus is being called the son of David. This is the claim of messianic kingship over the kingdom of God. That's the claim. And the religious leaders want it stopped because they don't believe that's true about Jesus. But Jesus says, if they don't cry it out, the stones, he means the stones of the temple all around him will cry it out. They will cry out who he is, the son of David and the one who will build the new temple of God. But notice Jesus' conversation with him. It's very important because this will be taken up the next day when there will be a lot of questions thrown at Jesus and there will be an engagement of a lot of back and forth between questions and answers between those who were not believers in him, one who might be on the road, and from Jesus himself. So these two provocative actions of Jesus the prophet that come to proclaim that he himself will become the temple of God and he himself is the son of David, the king of Israel. That's behind these provocative actions. Now that sets up the action of the religious leaders the next day coming one group after another to challenge him with questions in order to try to discredit him before the crowds so that they can separate his people. And in separating them, they can get a hold of him and carry out their intention to have him put to death. But notice Jesus also teaching about the whole purpose of the temple. He says to them, Is it not written that my house shall be called a house of prayer? This is what we call a rhetorical question. Jesus is asking the question, but in asking the question, he is given the answer in the question that he asked. 
And then he sets it up in order to teach the people the whole purpose of the temple that is associated truly with the worship of God and with the prayer, not only for the Jews, but for all the nations. Because he quotes from the prophets. He quotes from Isaiah and he quotes from Jeremiah. This is where they come from. Isaiah 56, 7 says, I will bring to these to my holy, no, I will bring these to my holy mountain and make them joyful in my house of prayer. Their burnt offerings and their sacrifices will be accepted on my altar, for my house will be called a house of prayer for all peoples. That's Isaiah 56, 7. But you have made it a den of robbers. That's a quotation or an allusion to Jeremiah 7, 11, where the prophet Jeremiah says, speaking in God's name, has this house, which is called by my name, become a den of robbers in your eyes? Behold, I myself have seen it, says Yahweh. And Jesus, in making this declaration, is associating himself with the Father and with this temple as the house of prayer. He will teach his own disciples later in the week that they are to offer prayer to the Father in his name and by his authority. It's vital that we understand the reason the temple existed. The temple in the Old Covenant was a place of God's habitation. And it was a place where he had made provision for his people in the temporary covering of their sins so that they could have a covenantal relationship with him. All of this is prophetic of the Messiah who would come, God's promised one, who would fulfill the whole purpose by removing the sins of the people and by establishing a direct relationship between the people and God in and through his own action as the mediator, as the Messiah. So Jesus' provocative actions on this day and his provocative question and the teaching that ensued along with the healings that occurred on this Monday in the temple stir up a hornet's nest, as we say. But when it's through, Jesus goes out with the twelve and they return to Bethany to spend the night. The next day, the rapid fire questions will ensue. Stay tuned. This has been Wayne Conrad with Bible Insights.